just start a new pistol format without telling anybody? For those of you who've been keeping up with the gun industry, you know that the newest trend in concealed carry handguns is the micro compact. Redundant, I know, but it means something. We're talking about guns roughly an inch thick that hold about 10 rounds or more of nine millimeter. Manufacturers manage to get double stack capacities into single stack size guns by either ancient sorcery, or more often re-engineering their magazine geometries to accommodate more ammunition. There's a few to choose from as we sit here today, including the SIG P365 Springfield Hellcat, Shield Plus from Smith & Wesson, Taurus GX4, the Ruger Max 9, and there are at least two more on the way from big manufacturers, trust me. I reviewed the Ruger Max 9 a few months ago, and I have to say that I was relatively impressed. Ruger looked at the single stack Ruger LC9, and they realized that if they stretched it a little here, tugged a little there, they could make a double stack 9mm roughly the same size as the LC9. And Ruger's done an unbelievably good job at listening to what the market's demanding for concealed carry and accommodating that demand with features like factory night sights and the Max 9 was optic ready as a standard all at one of the lowest price points in the field. So they're being competitive to say the least. So I picture Ruger engineers in their lab coats and they're sitting around and patting each other on the back, congratulating themselves over the Max 9 when all of a sudden someone raises a glass of champagne and drops a Ruger LCP out of their pocket. Everyone collectively has an idea and the Ruger LCP Max is born. Guys, we've had lightweight single stack 380s for 20 years now. The P380 came out in 2003. There's no reason why we can't take single stack 380s and do the exact same thing we've been doing with 9 millimeters. A little mag geometry change here, some light necromancy, and boom, double stack 380 in a frame almost the same size as the single stack. That's what Ruger's done with the LCP Max, and now I wonder if other manufacturers are going to follow suit. So if you want the executive summary and to skip the video, the LCP Max is basically the Ruger LCP2, just made a little bit chubbier in the frame to give you 10 rounds of capacity plus one in the chamber. Now let's get into the specs because this is really important. We all know that 380 is like the Danny DeVito of calibers, but the good news is there's a loading or two that still meets the FBI handgun effectiveness standards. That is, it'll penetrate 12 inches of ballistic gel. I wrote an article on decent 380 personal defense loading for TFB in 2019, and I discovered that federal HST 99 grain 380, for example, will penetrate a hair over 12 inches of ballistic gel considered the minimum by the FBI after passing through several layers of cloth, and it'll expand to about 0.6 inches, which is the size of a US dime. Is the 380 as effective as nine millimeter? No, but the point is that the right loading should get the job done, and the LCP Max will hold 10 plus one rounds into a flush fit magazine, or 12 plus one rounds into a factory extendo that gives you a full grip. But why even consider the LCP Max when you can get a 9mm micro compact instead with the same capacity? That's the question. And the answer is that Ruger has made this gun so damn tiny that it's attractive. So check out the SIG P365 compared to the LCP Max, and you can see it's substantially smaller. When Ruger first told me about their idea, I was skeptical. I figured it was going to be a gun roughly the same size and weight as the P365. Not at all. This gun's only 10.6 ounces in weight unloaded, which is roughly half the weight of the S&W Shield Plus and about a half pound lighter than the already featherweight SIG P365. It's even lighter than the Scandium and Titanium Smith & Wesson 340 PD revolver. I mean, the LCP Max really makes 9mm micro compacts look like 9mm macro compacts, eh? Am I right? Here's the LCP Max compared to the SIG P365 and the S&W Shield Plus. The slide of the LCP Max is only 0.8 inches thick. The overall length is 5.2 inches. It's four inches tall, which is the norm, because if you make them any shorter than four inches tall, it limits your capacity, and at a certain point, you'll look like an English Lord holding a cup of tea instead of a gun when you can only get like three fingers on the grip. Uh, no disrespect to members of the English aristocracy 
who watch TFB TV. The gist here is that the LCP Max is so small that it kind of occupies its own space in the concealed carry handgun market, much smaller and lighter than micro compact 9mm. It's the same weight and virtually the same size as the LCP2 single stack 380, and it's hardly larger or heavier than my Keltec P380 while giving me four additional rounds of ammunition. The slide's got great front and rear slide serrations that work well. Ruger's also integrated what it refers to as raised cocking ears, which sounds a little to me like a joke sex move, but it's actually these handy rearmost serrations that extend a little more away from the slide and they give you more purchase whenever you're cocking the slide. This is brilliant because the chief complaint that new shooters have about micro compacts is they can be difficult to manually rack, especially if you're a physically weaker person like a senior citizen or an Atlanta Falcons fan. It comes with a tritium front sight that has like a white outline, just like what's in the Max 9, works great. The rear sight is that popular Hackathorn style blacked out rear with a U notch. It has a rounded rear face to prevent it from getting snagged during pocket draw, but the front face is flat, which allows you to cock the LCP Max on a hard flat surface or in a belt in case you're a pirate or a gunfight just turned you into one. All jokes aside, it's touches like these that probably get overlooked, but they show that Ruger's really thinking about these features for concealed carrier before they flip on the CNC machines. And again, it impresses me. The Ruger LCP Max accepts S&W bodyguard sights, so in the rare chance you don't like the factory options, again, Ruger coming through with some innovative features and allowing you to pick from sights that are already out there on the market instead of proprietary bullshit. It will also fit most existing LCP2 holsters, so the holsters are already out there, a whole ton of them. It has a reversible magazine release, and it comes with one 10-round magazine and a pocket holster. Here's, I'm not very confident about this pocket holster. Kind of the issue with these kind of pocket holsters is you know, you've got it in there, and then you go pull it out, and the holster typically comes out with the gun. So you've got an extra step there. So them's the specs, but how does it shoot? Surely a gun that weighs only 10 ounces must have some pretty brutal recoil, even if it is just shooting DeVito class 380. As it turns out, not really. It's funny. You know, again, look at this. Look at the progression just from getting to learn the trigger. First mag, second mag, third mag, fourth mag using crappy steel. Wolf tends to have a little bit more recoil. It tends to be a little bit hotter than what you typically shoot. So it's funny, we are really dialing it in. Every shot in the 10 ring here, just a couple kind of outside in the nine. Not really bad recoil. It's a surprisingly light recoiling gun and I find it much easier to control than the standard LCP. That stands to reason because you get a chunkier grip that's actually pretty ergonomic and I like the grip texture here. The sights are excellent. The trigger, ho-hum. Many of you are familiar with the LCP and you know that it uses an internal pre-cocked hammer rather than a true striker. In other words, this gun is like a weird hybrid of double action and single action. It's not double action because pulling the trigger doesn't serve to fully cock the hammer. And it's not single action because when you pull the trigger, you're pulling the hammer back just a little bit. It's like a mostly pre-cocked hammer. That translates to a mm, trigger pull, albeit a predictable mm, trigger pull. Funny enough, after only a couple hundred rounds, I started to get a blister on my finger. This gun wounded me, guys. I, of course, have to mention that we had a couple of minor issues on the range. In the first few hundred rounds, we had a hollow point fail to completely feed all the way into the chamber. Ooh. We had a, actually had a hollow point kind of failure to feed. I'm going to give Ruger the benefit of the doubt here because, as usual, 
I did not clean and I did not lube this gun after I got it. I quite literally took it to the range immediately. And this malfunction occurred during that two or 300 round break-in period. Moreover, we shot six different types of ammunition, including two different types of hollow points and several magazines of Wolf steel ammunition. And we had no other malfunctions. If I were planning on regularly carrying this gun, I'd make sure to break it in and then try to shoot at least one or two boxes of my preferred carry ammunition through it to ensure reliability with that ammo. We also had a magazine base plate pop off whenever it came into square direct contact with the concrete floor at the range, but that was just a matter of the base plate literally slipping off. All I did was kind of slide it back on there and it was fine. All right, interesting thing here. Um, the magazine, the base plate just popped off whenever I did that mag change. So the mag plate, it struck this concrete base plate down, base plate goes flying. I'd be surprised if it were like broken, broken. It probably just, I bet if I slip this back on, it's fine. Oh yeah. Yeah, there we go. We're back in business. Good to go. And it only happened that one time. Just kind of a weird issue. So, in conclusion, what do I think of the Ruger LCP Max? I would say that this is a promising gun. In fact, even if you're a micro-compact 9mm fan like I am, there's no shame in having the LCP Max in your quiver. It's just that much smaller and that much lighter than its 9mm counterparts, so it isn't like this is a redundant addition to your carry options it's going to be smaller and lighter, most likely, than whatever 9mm you have. While companies market 9mm micro compacts as pocket guns, and to an extent, it's true that they will fit in your pocket, but you need to be wearing some Kmart-ass Bugle Boys to really use a 9mm micro compact in your pocket and for it to be comfortable. But then again, you're wearing Kmart-ass Bugle Boys, and I would personally rather be shot dead. The point I'm driving at is that unlike Micro Compact 9mm, the LCP Max 2 is truly a pocketable semi-auto and it gives you 11 rounds of a very workable and popular self-defense caliber, all while being shootable. So do I like my 9mm Micro Compacts better? Yeah, but basically, this is a gun for either someone who wants a Micro Compact but 9mm is too much for them to handle, or for those of us out there who wouldn't mind having a true pop it in your pocket while you go to the corner store to pick up a six-pack gun. It's just that small and light that it is a true pocket pistol. The trigger took a little bit of getting used to, and even after you get used to it, it's not that great, but it's not terrible either. It's like the exaggeration of a factory Glock trigger in that you have some take-up before you hit a wall, but with the LCP, the take-up is just longer, and the wall is just harder. Don't plan on winning any competitions with this gun, but it is indeed a serviceable trigger and accuracy is better than out of single stack 380 selections, that's for sure. MSRP for this gun is $449, and if this starts selling in the mid $300 street price range, I think Ruger's going to have a hard time manufacturing enough of these to keep up, and I wonder if anyone else is going to join the fray. You have other popular single stack 380s like the Smith & Wesson Bodyguard and the kel P380, and both of those manufacturers have made a micro compact 9mm in the past, so I think they already have the recipe. The question is whether or not the 380 class of micro compacts that Ruger has just gotten us into is going to take off the way 9mm micro compacts did in the consumer market. Time will tell, but in the meantime, the LCP Max is an outstanding option, and in my opinion, I think it even renders the LCP functionally obsolete. It's footprint-wise the same size, it's the same weight, you just deal with a little bit bigger butt, which makes the gun more comfortable to shoot, and really not that less concealable. One other thing that'll bother only the most OCD of you, if you remember my Maraca test, from the Ruger Max 9 video, uh, these guns tend to be a little loosey-goosey with the fit. Hear that? Can I get a little, little mariachi dancer here? Oh yeah. Thank you, as usual, for watching. If you like the content, please subscribe, or at least consider it. Thank you to our sponsors, Ventura Munitions, the best ammunition store on the face of the earth. It's actual fact, believe it or not. 
Blue Alpha, they make the best gun belts on the face of the world, and Top Gun Supply, your online shooting sports superstore. But thank you most of all to you, because we wouldn't be here without you. Take care.